ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this evening for this inauguration ceremony, a historic inauguration ceremony for the first woman elected in the great borough of Queens as DA and Chief Law Enforcement Officer Melinda Katz. The orchestra music you enjoyed as you walked in here was courtesy of none other than the Queen's Symphony Orchestra. Which was founded by the district attorney's late father, David Katz. Let's thank them for helping ensure his presence and his legacy was a part of this historic occasion. And now if you will please join me in rising for the presentation of the colors by the ceremonial unit of the New York City Police Department. And please remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance and National Anthem. Our pledge today will be led by Gianna Cerboni Tioli, the founder of the Jean Dale Katz Award, named in honor of the DA's late mother and founder of the Queen's Council on the Arts. Our anthem today will be delivered by Camilla Noguera, a resident of Corona and a sophomore at Middle College High School at LaGuardia Community College. And I believe Ms. Tioli is indisposed. And so I will take personal privilege and lead the crowd in a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, please be seated. And now I'd like to invite up distinguished faith leaders from across our borough to lead us in interfaith prayers, beginning with Reverend Dr. John Boyd II of New Greater Bethel Ministries and member of the Katz Transition Committee, followed by Imam Yusuf Ahmed Chowdhury of Darul Ulum, New York, followed by Rabbi Chaim Schwartz of the Rabbinical Seminary of, of America, followed by Bai Bupinder Singh of the Sikh Cultural Society, and followed by Pandit Anand Maharaj of 
Sarvadeo Mandir. Reverend Boyd. Can I please ask you to stand and join hands with your brother and your sister to the right or left of you? Lord, we come today first to thank you for this day of life, health, and strength. We come together to celebrate this auspicious occasion of this new journey for our community. Today we stand on the precipice of a new era in our social justice system here in the world's barrel. We have come together as a people to the inauguration of this servant of God and the people of Queens, the Honorable Melinda Katz, to ask God's richest blessing and divine direction upon her and her administration. Father of heaven, we ask you today that as Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward, now anoint this your servant with the spirit of divine leadership. Gracious Father, as you have gave Solomon wisdom and understanding, exceeding much and largest of heart, even as a saying that is on the seashore, give to this your civil servant the gift of wisdom and understanding of Solomon. Finally, as Esther obtained favor in the sight of God, and all of them that looked upon her, so we decree the divine favor upon your servant, Melinda Katz, to lead and guide this agency into a new era of true diversity, justice, equality for both victims and the accused. Lord, just as the Honorable Melinda Catt has successfully led the world's barrel for the last eight years, we believe that she will lead the District Attorney's Office of Queens, New York, with humility and justice. Now, may the light of your eternal spirit illuminate her life as it has illuminated her path and her direction. In the wonderful, precious, matchless name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and everyone said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Laqad jaakum rasoolun min anfusikum aziz. عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم. Translation Indeed, there has come to you a messenger from among yourselves. Grievous to him is what you suffer from the difficulties. He is concerned over you, and to the believers he is kind and merciful. But if they turn away, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, say, Allah is sufficient for me. There is no worthy of worship but him. I have relied upon him, and he is the Lord of the great throne. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Avinu Bashamayim, our Father in heaven, grant of your wisdom today and every day to Melinda Katz, whom our community has chosen to represent us as our district attorney to protect us from criminals who mean to do us harm. Grant her and her staff the strength and the fortitude to stand up to the criminal elements which lurk in our society. Grant her the energy to pursue these misguided individuals and enable her to prosecute them according to the laws of our great land. Grant her the wisdom and peace of mind to know 
and to understand what is truly in the best interests of those who have sent her upon this vital mission. As the top crime, crime fighter in our borough of Queens, protect Melinda Katz and all the members of her staff, as well as all the brave men and women who don the sacred blue uniform of the New York City Police Department, as well as the officers of the court system. They are your agents, God, to protect the peace here on your earth, here in our city, here in our borough, here on our streets. As the Mishnah tells us in Pirkei Avos, the ethics of our fathers, chapter three, Mishnah two, Rabbi Hanina taught, pray for the welfare of the government, for if people will not fear it, a fellow would swallow his neighbor alive. The commentators explain that a basic responsibility of government is to maintain social order and peace, and instilling fear of the law prevents anarchy and crime from destroying the fabric of society. God in heaven, enable Melinda Katz to do her job and to do it well for many years to come so that all the citizens of this great borough can live in peace and harmony with one another, which will enable everyone to recognize your holy name and your mighty hand in guiding the world to ultimate peace and brotherhood. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. Wahe Guruji ka khalsa, Wahe Guruji ki fateh. Everyone, good evening. I am Bupinder Singh, Head Priest Kurdwara Sikh Culture Society. We have gathered here today to congratulate the first female district attorney, Honorable Miss Melinda Kaif. She has been a great support for the Sikh community and we hope that she continues to serve. All the diverse communities with equal respect, I would like to see a prayer for Honorable Melinda Kaif that God guides her to do good work and make all communities proud, everyone. Please with me as I say a short prayer for Honorable Miss Melinda Kaif. Thank you. Sat Shri Akal Purkh Ji Ka Tiyan Tar Ke Bolo Ji Vahe Guru. He Akal Purkh Vahe Guru. आप ਦੇ ਚਰਨਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਰਦਾਸ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਸਤਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਨਿਊਯਾਰਕ ਸਿਟੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਭ ਤੋਂ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਵਾਰ ਆਨਰੇਬਲ ਮਿਸ ਮਲਿੰਡਾ ਕੈਫ ਬੀਬੀ ਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਜੋ ਇਹ ਸਰਵਿਸ ਪ੍ਰਦਾਨ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਆਪ ਜੀ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰੀ ਸੌਂਪੀ ਹੈ ਸਤਿਗੁਰੂ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਕਰਨੀ ਆਪ ਆਪਣੀ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਦੁਆਰਾ ਇਹ ਜ਼ਿੰਮੇਵਾਰੀ ਨਿਭਾਉਣੀ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਿਆਰ ਬਣਾਉਣਾ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਦਾ ਮਾਨ ਸਤਿਕਾਰ ਕਰਾਉਣਾ ਅਤੇ ਇਸ ਕੰਟਰੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਦਾ ਸੁੱਖ ਸ਼ਾਂਤੀ ਰੱਖਣੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਮਿਹਰ ਦਾ ਹੱਥ ਸਭਨਾ ਦੇ ਸਿਰ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਰੱਖਣਾ ਸਭਨਾ ਨੂੰ ਖੁਸ਼ੀਆਂ ਪ੍ਰਦਾਨ ਕਰਨੀਆਂ ਜਗਤ ਜਲੰਦਾ ਰੱਖ ਲੈ ਆਪਣੀ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਤਹਾਰ ਜਿਤ ਦਵਾਰੇ ਉਭਰੇ ਤਿਤੇ ਲਿਹੋ ਉਭਾਰ ਨਾਨਕ ਨਾਮ ਚੜਦੀ ਕਲਾ ਤੇਰੇ ਪਾਣੇ ਸਰਬਤ ਦਾ ਪਲਾ ਬੋਲੇ ਸੋ ਨਿਹਾਸ ਸਤ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਆਕਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ Vaheguru ji ki fateh thank you
Namaskar, Sita Ram. Good evening to each and every one of you. I pray in the name of that divine energy that prevails in the entire of the cosmos. And I ask of that divine energy to bestow blessings upon on our, our dear honorable Melinda Katz as she is about to step into a new part of life, a new office in life. May you bless our divine God, for you are the giver of knowledge. You are that one can be able to help her to express herself properly. May you guide her, may you protect her in your name and to all your forms we bow. Hari Om Sumukascha Ekadantascha Kapilo Gajikarnaka Lambodarasha Vigato Vigana Nasho Vinayaka Durma Keturganadhyaksha Bhal Chandra Gajananam Dwad Setani Namani Ya Pratik Shrinu Yadhyapi Vidyaram Bevi Bahicha Praveshe Nirgame Tatha Sangramam Sankate Cheva Vigana Tasyana Jayate Om Shuklam Varam Dharam Devam Shashi Varanam Chatur Bhujam Prasanna Vadam Dhyayeta Sarva Vigana Prashantaye Let there be peace, dear God. Let there be peace in the heavens. Let there be peace upon the earth. Let there be peace all around. To you, O Divine Lord, we pray. Om Dhau Shanti Rantarik Shagvam Shanti Prithvi Shanti Rapa Shanti Raushadhaya Shanti Vinaspatya Shanti Vishwadeva Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarvagvam Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Kshamaha Shanti Ridhi Rabhavatu Om Shanti Thank you very much. Please be seated again. Uh, before we welcome, um, or we ask Dean Michael Simons to welcome us, um, I understand that we are joined by several distinguished guests, some of whom have uh, extremely busy schedules and entire uh, the state of New York to cover. And so I'd like to ask um, the Honorable Kathy Hochul to come up to say a few words uh, Lieutenant Governor of the State of New York. Good evening. I'm wearing my St. John's colors just like Melinda here. Did anybody notice? So is Tish James. Just want to get that out there. Uh, tremendous respect for our institutions and particularly one that inspired a young student to pursue a career in the law, and that would be certainly our new district attorney, Melinda Katz. Melinda, what a spectacular day for you and your family, and I'm so proud to be joined by our friends in elective office, our many district attorneys who are in the front row here, I'm sure will be acknowledged, but also uh, another person who I share the title as statewide office holder with, and that is our tremendous Attorney General, Tis James is here as well. You'll be hearing from her shortly. I'm very fond of Tish because she allowed me to go from being the only woman in state government and now there's 50% of us, so we upped our numbers very quickly. And that causes me to acknowledge that with Sharon as the acting borough president and we have a female county clerk and a female district attorney, women are really rocking queens here. I just want to make an observation. And there's room for a few token men. I think our mayor may be joining us, Bill de Blasio and Greg Meese. That's all right. That's all right. I, I'm, I'm an equal opportunity offender here. Uh, uh, but what a great day this is. You know, you look at the career of this young woman and to see that early on she had a passion to serve her community, one of the youngest assembly members ever elected, serving on the city council, serving as an extraordinary individual who I became friends with in her capacity as borough president. And she made sure that every single person in Queens met me. Uh, when you campaign with someone like Melinda Katz, uh, she is beloved in this incredibly beautiful place that is the most diverse, 
piece of land this borough cleans on the planet. And that is a gift to have someone like Melinda Katz being willing to step forward and give of her talents and her love and her heart to this borough. But now to be able to call upon her as a top law enforcement officer, as the district attorney, is something that she has been ready for all her life. Now she steps into a role that society now calls upon her to draw on the strengths and the skills that she's honed in over this lifetime. Because in a place as diverse as the Queens, yes, we honor that, we celebrate that. That's why New York is such a spectacular state. But in our own state, hate crimes are up 20% just from one year ago. We have religious groups. We have people who have attacked in the streets. We have blatant racism, bigotry. And for some reason, I'm not going to comment on what's going on in Washington, that's another whole speech, but this evil that was under a rock for so long is now crawling outward and permeating our society. So this is when history has called upon Melinda Katz to step forward and protect innocent citizens. Because Franklin Roosevelt gave a speech back in 1941, and he says, citizens are entitled to four freedoms, and one of them was freedom from fear. And that is one of the responsibilities that a district attorney has in working with law enforcement and community partners to make sure the citizens go about their lives freely without fear. That is the challenge of 2020. But I know there's no person more ready to accept that challenge than my good friend, Melinda Katz. And I'll leave her, you can give that a round of applause because I think she is gonna do an incredible job. In fact, I'll make a prediction. She may even serve in office longer than her predecessor, maybe 31, 32 years. And maybe she'd be like 62 by then or so. I mean, right, she'll still be a young woman. She started as a baby. Uh, but what a legacy she inherits and what a legacy she will leave. And as someone from Buffalo who lives close by to the Robert Jackson Courthouse, named after an individual attorney from Jamestown, lived in Buffalo, became our attorney general in the state, attorney general in the United States, became a Supreme Court justice, and also the chief prosecutor of the Nuremberg trials before he went back to a seat as a US Supreme Court justice, Robert Jackson. Let me just tell you the words he spoke about when he addressed United States attorneys, but this applies to district attorneys as well. Robert Jackson said that the prosecutor has more control over the life and liberty and reputation than any person in America. His discretion, and I'm gonna change his words to her discretion, is tremendous. And while the prosecutor at her best is one of the most beneficent forces in society, if she acts from malice or other base motives, she could be one of the worst. That will not happen in this area. That will not happen in Queens. That will not happen in our state because we have someone who is a person of honor, of dignity, and a reputation that is flawless. That is the person you want, making that decision and the scales of justice, the decisions that must be made day to day. Melinda Katz is ready. I'm ready to continue to support her. Governor Cuomo is so proud of his fellow Queens native. And we'll be with you through everything you need, Melinda Katz. And thank you for answering the call that history has placed on your shoulders on this very day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Hochul. And now I'd like to ask the Honorable Letitia James the Attorney General of the State of New York, to come and say a few words. Thank you. Uh, we coordinated our outfits in honor of St. John's. So a round of applause to St. John's University, everybody. Oh, you can do better than that. 
And we also coordinated our outfits because um, Melinda and I once talked about having a law firm. And the law firm would be named Melinda, Darcel Clark, um, Madeline, and Tish. And we would all be supervised by Chief Justice Janet DeFiori. <laughs> Yay. And I was really impressed because I looked at the first, first row and I commented to the district attorney of Brooklyn. I said, they're all women. That's amazing. Her executive team is all women. And then Eric um, whispered in my ear, look in the back row, Tish. <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> so um, it's a great day here in the borough of Queens. Senator Robert Kennedy once said that the glory of justice and the majesty of law are created not just by the Constitution, nor the courts, nor by the offices of the law or the lawyers, but by the men and women who constitute our society, all of you in this room and all of Queens. That's justice. Because all of the residents in Queens demanded justice, and they demanded equal justice under the law because all of you are guardians of justice. And this, my friends, is a new day for equal justice. You see, my friend Melinda takes office at a pivotal moment of criminal justice reforms. And I am confident she is the right person at the right time to steer the ship of justice here in Queens in a new and a better direction. I'm confident that she will dispense justice without fear or favor, without consideration of anyone's status or their zip code or their race or their religion or their ethnicity. I'm confident that um, she will dispense justice without revenge but justice in its truest sense. I want to personally thank her for her leadership in the rights to protect, to pro, in, our, in the fight to protect the rights of immigrant families here in Queens, including our lawsuit challenging ICE in the courtroom, courthouse arrests, and her commitment to stronger hate crime prevention and prosecution measures, because we will not live in fear and we believe in love, the kind of love that I talk about in church, the kind of love that I talk about all over the state of New York. It's called agape love, and that's love that knows no boundaries. Because the, and we, I also want to celebrate her and thank her because her strong belief in second chance programs and her commitment to work with members of faith to transform houses of faith into houses of justice and to give individuals a second chance at life. And she also understands and she recognizes that the criminal justice system is a system created by men. And an inherent in that system is a system of bias. And so I applaud her for implementing a conviction integrity review unit to review wrongful convictions in this borough. Yeah. Because my faith teaches me that God is the only person who does not make mistakes. You see, District Attorney Katz grew up in Forest Hills and has devoted her career in the State Assembly, in the City Council, and as Queensboro President to leveling the playing field for the people of this community who have been marginalized and stigmatized and forgotten. I look forward to working with her to give voice to crime victims and to work with our, my office to disrupt human trafficking here in the borough of Queens. And I am confident that she will be an outstanding guardian of justice for all of the people of Queens because she is guided by a moral compass that pulls her closer to the arc of the universe which Dr. King teaches all of us, bends towards justice. I congratulate her as she takes on this important responsibility, and I look forward to her open-minded approach to serving the ends of justice in every corner of Queens, in every community of Queens, on every street in Queens, 
and for all of the great residents of Queens who now and always will look forward to the simple concept of justice. Thank you. Thank you, General James. And now I'd like to ask the Honorable Bill de Blasio, the mayor of the city of New York, New York to join us on stage and deliver remarks. Well, everybody, this is a night to celebrate. Something great is happening here in Queens. The people of Queens, in their wisdom, chose a great district attorney at a crucial moment in history. I want to tell you three very quick things about Melinda Katz, and I want to remind you that I'm an expert on the topic because we joined the City Council at the same time, and we have served together, I'm not going to say over the last two decades, that sounds too much, don't you think? I'm not going to say over the last two decades. We've served together for a little while in public service, and I have watched Melinda Katz in action. I've seen what she does every single day to serve the people of this borough. And it's remarkable. So three things I want to tell you. First of all, when you think about someone who is hardworking, who knows their subject matter, who's professional at all times, you literally could not do better than Melinda Katz. You're talking about someone who comes every single day ready to do the people's work. Second, on the topic of persistence and diligence. Well, let me tell you something. When she was my colleague, we used to talk a lot. We'd work on all sorts of things. It was great. When I became mayor, she found my cell phone number and used it to text, to call, to text again. Then she would email, call, text. Anything that Queens needed, I was going to hear about it, not once, not twice, but 10 or 20 times until I did the thing that she said Queens needed. I realize it was just easier to give in and do whatever Melinda asked. <laughs> Third, she really loves this borough and she really loves the people of Queens. In her heart, deep in her heart. I have heard more times than I could count, the most diverse place in the world, the world's borough. Okay, Melinda, you made your point. Yeah, I know, you're not finished. We'll hear more of it. But uh, the truth is, I, I've been in neighborhoods all over this borough with Melinda, and, and when I see the joy she takes in connecting with the people of this borough, the pride she has, the real sense of this place born and bred, and it's in her heart and soul, and to serve Queens to her is the highest calling that exists anywhere in the world. That's who she is. So those are the, the things I want to tell you about Melinda, my own personal observation of this extraordinary leader. But, but here's the other thing I want to tell you about the moment we're living through. It's a really important time to have a district attorney who is strong, who is smart, who wants to make sure that the wheels of justice turn and that they get it right, believes deeply in justice and fairness, she is not wedded to the ways of the past by her very being. She's someone who wants to see us do better, wants to see us improve and innovate all the time. But there's another reason why she's called to this role at such a crucial time. And I want to talk about just what we've seen the last few weeks in our city, but for the last three years, unfortunately, in our country, we've seen hatred on the rise. We've seen intolerance out in the open. We've seen a kind of speech that used to be unacceptable made normal. We've seen, in fact, threats to the values that we hold dear in this city. This is a place that respects everyone, right? This is a place for everyone. That's New York City, isn't it? 
And nowhere is that more true than in the borough of Queens. But now leaders today have to confront something we used to not have to worry about. Now we have to worry about hate coming out in the open. We have to worry about people feeling they have permission to act on their most negative impulses. And the way to turn that around takes a lot of different things. It takes teaching our young people differently, and it takes bringing our communities together, but it also takes law enforcement. It takes the strength of law enforcement to show we will never tolerate hate, any biased crime. It's not just against one community, it's against all of us. An attack on one of us is an attack on all of us. So you need a strong DA to stand up to hate. But you also need a leader who can call out people's better angels. I'll conclude with this point, and Melinda will forgive me if I use an example from my borough of Brooklyn. We went through a really bad time. I think everyone here remembers who was here in 1991. We went through a really bad time in Crown Heights. We went through a really tragic time. We saw communities torn apart. We saw open conflict. We saw riots, something this city is not used to. And in those days and months after those riots in 1991, people asked themselves, could we ever put this back together again? Could we ever bring peace? Could we ever get people to understand each other after so much tension, so much pain? And then something beautiful happened in Crown Heights. Communities, all with one voice, decided that we had to do better. Leaders of all different backgrounds, clergy, elected officials, everyone said, we are not going to live in conflict. And for years and years, they worked to understand each other, to communicate with each other, to show their communities that they were walking hand in hand. And Crown Heights became synonymous with peace and understanding and respect. So in this borough, in this city, in this country, we're all going to have to remember that lesson. And we're going to have to glue some things back together that have been torn asunder. And everybody here, every single one of you is part of that. Everyone here has to be an agent of respect and tolerance, help us all get better. But we're going to especially look to our leaders, and we're going to especially look to those we depend on to enforce our laws. So it's a moment of challenge. It's a moment where we're called to a higher mission. I guarantee you, no one will take on that mission and do a better job at it than Melinda Katz. So I conclude by saying thank you to all of you to, for being here to celebrate and support her. And Melinda, as you go down this road, if you ever need anything, I think you have my cell number already. <laughs> and I believe you will use it. And I have a lot of witnesses to that fact. Congratulations. Great things ahead for Melinda Katz. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and now, before again, I apologize, Dean Simons. Um, we would like to invite the Honorable Gregory Meeks, uh, U.S. Representative, and of course, the Chair of the Queen's Democratic Party. Good evening. And it is a good evening. Let me tell you something. I'm going to be real brief because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give away a little secret. You know, one of the things we know that our DA is a hard worker. So she can call you any hour in the morning or any hour at the night. So I got a call yesterday. And the call was, you know, I really want to be in and out of here in about an hour. But all these folks keep calling. They want to speak and they want to do certain things because everybody wants to come. I just want to get to work. 
So we're going to ask you to come up, but only say a few words and good thing, because everybody has said everything except for me. So I'm going to be real brief, because one of the things that we know that Melinda Katz will still be Melinda Katz, no matter what the title is, no matter where she goes, she has a mission and she will be who she is. And that's why we are so lucky in this great borough of ours to say that she is our first woman district attorney in Queens County. <laughs> Let me say, the Attorney General used the word justice a lot. So I sat down and said, let me look up. Let me see what Mr. Webster has to say about the word justice. And it said, the maintenance of the administration of what is just, especially by the impartial adjustment of conflicting claims or the assignment of merit or punishment, justice. And then I thought to myself, what is the most important character that I would want in a district attorney? And I thought about my long history with Melinda Katz. Even before she was in the city council, she was in the state assembly. And I watched her there and grow. And one of the things that I love about Melinda is she is a person of conscious, and conscious is defined as the sense of consciousness of the moral goodness or blameworthiness of one's own conduct, intentions, or character together with a feeling of obligation to do right, to do right. That's what we need in a district attorney because a district attorney more so than a judge, more so than a lawyer. A district attorney really looks at all of the aspects of a scenario and can determine based upon their conscience who deserves a break and who deserves punishment. A district attorney is the one that stands in the gap when we look at what's taking place in our country today. I say that the camera of history is rolling on all of us. And as that camera rolled on Queens County, and ultimately, when we finally counted every vote, and we know that every vote matters, every vote counts, every vote counts, every vote counts. Every vote counts. And when every voter was counted, Justice was had, and we had a mission of conscience to be the DA of Queens County. I am so glad I live here, I'm a resident here, and I have someone who will render justice for all of us, no matter where we come from, no matter what we look like, no matter what our religion is, no matter what our creed is, we have Melinda Katz, and we have your back. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Congressman. Um, and so back to our regularly scheduled program. Uh, I'd like to ask up to the podium uh, our, our host for today, uh, Michael Simons, Dean of the St. John's Univer University School of Law. Good, good evening, everyone. It's a real pleasure for me to welcome everyone here to Karnasek Arena and to St. John's University on this wonderful occasion. Uh, this is an exciting day for DA Katz and her family. It's an exciting day for the Queens District Attorney's Office. Uh, and it's an exciting day for the St. John's Law family. Uh, and it's wonderful to have up here with us another member of the St. John's Law family, herself a former district attorney and now the chief judge of New York State, uh, the Honorable Janet DeFiori. 
So Melinda Katz graduated from St. John's Law School in 1990, just a few years after the chief judge, and was admitted to the bar in 1991. 1991. Since then, Queens County has had only one district attorney. And so this ceremony marks not just a changing of the guard, but, but a change in the way that the role of the district attorney is conceived. 30 years ago, no one anywhere put the words progressive and prosecutor together. Queens now has a district attorney who embraces that vision. And that's what makes this such an exciting day, not just for St. John's or for the DA's office, but for all of the people of Queens County. The ties between St. John's Law School and the DA's office are long and deep. Just as importantly, the ties between St. John's University and the borough of Queens are long and deep. So it's a particular pleasure for us to host this ceremony on our campus and a joy to see our alumnus be the one to lead the Queens DA's office into the future. And Melinda, congratulations. You've made Alma Mater very proud. Thank you, Dean Simons. Uh, and so, in case you were wondering, um, we've got a, a few folks up here on stage with us, and I just want to take this opportunity to introduce them. They are the incoming top leadership of the new District Attorney of Queens County. And so, first, we have to the DA's right, Jennifer Nyberg, the Chief Assistant District Attorney. To her right, we have Camille Chin Ki Fat, the Chief of Staff and Administration. <laughs> to her right, we have Colleen Babb, the Executive ADA of the Community Partnerships Division, which is a newly created division in the Queens District Attorney's Office, and it reflects. District Attorney Katz's commitment to partnerships and working closely with communities toward empowerment and justice. And to her right, we have Johnette Trail, Executive ADA of Appeals and Special Litigation. And someone mentioned we do have a second row. Right behind uh, Executive ADA Johnette Trail, we have Daniel Saunders, Executive ADA of the Major Crimes Division. <laughs> Next to him, we have Peshoy Yakob, who is a proud St. John's Law alum, and also the incoming Executive ADA of the Supreme Court Trial Division. And next to him, we have Angela Albertus, Executive ADA of Criminal Practice and Policy Division. <laughs> and of course, we wanted to introduce the counsel to the district attorney, John Castellano. <laughs> Not on stage, but watching our back, if, is Chief DI Edwin Murphy. And right behind the district attorney, someone who will be reporting directly to the district attorney. And as she promised, the creation, heading up the creation of the Convictions Integrity Unit, we have Bryce Benjet. You'll read about uh, more of their bios in the papers and the news in the coming days. Um, but I'd like to take this opportunity to thank two individuals in this room without whom this top flight leadership team would not have been made possible. And that is, of course, the co-chairs of the CATS Transition Committee, Justice Randall Eng and Christopher Renfro. I 
I know District Attorney Katz and the entire borough of Queens and its families are deeply grateful to, grateful for your guidance, your counsel, and your endless hours of your precious time over the last few weeks as they scoured for top talent uh, across the city and across the state to bring here to the borough of Queens. Uh, before we continue, I wanted to uh, acknowledge a few additional distinguished guests that we have here today from across the state. Let's see, who do we have? Uh, of course, we have Jumani Williams, public advocate of the city of New York. We have colleagues to the district attorney, uh, Eric Gonzalez from Brooklyn. Darcel Clark from the Bronx. And Madeline Singus of Nassau County. We also have additional countywide leaders. Borough Presidents Ruben Diaz Jr. from the Bronx. <laughs> Borough President Gail Brewer from Manhattan. <laughs> and Borough President Eric Adams of Brooklyn. <laughs> we are also joined by the Honorable Yvette Clark. And we have numerous uh, members of the New York City Council. Council member Karen Koslowitz. <laughs> I, Danique Miller. <laughs> Danny Drum. <laughs> Donovan Richards. <laughs> and Vanessa Gibson. From the New York State Assembly, we have the Honorable David Weprin, Edward Bronstein, Michael Dendecker, Stacy Pfeffer Amato, Daniel Rosenthal, my Assembly Member Neely Rosick. And of course, the illustrious Jeff Aubrey. Yeah. From the New York State Senate, we have Joe Adabo. Yeah. And my former boss, John Liu. Yeah. We are also joined by former elected officials yet still public officials and public servants in their own right. Former Council Member Mark Weprin. <laughs> former Council Member Elizabeth Crowley. <laughs> and former Assemblyman Phil Goldfeder. <laughs> if I missed you, nudge me to the, to the corner. Uh, and now, you'll just bear with me one moment. Um, okay, we went a little bit out of order, so I apologize, you'll forgive me. Oh, thank you. We do want to recognize um, former borough president, Claire Shulman. And another public servant who, I got to say, was the least maintenance in, in the uh, planning for this event, Mr. Rick Cotton of the Port Authority. <laughs> Thank you for RSVPing properly, Mr. Cotton. <laughs> Ten years ago, there was a young boy named Kevin. And at age 13, he was an active member of his church's youth ministry team and a junior usher, 13 years old. And Kevin was a freshman at the Humanities and Arts High School at the Campus Magnet High School complex, located three blocks 
from where he would be killed. Kevin, who never had any connection with gangs, was walking to McDonald's after school with his friends when he was struck by a stray bullet. And in that instant, his family, his community, they were robbed of a precious, precious life. But in the depths of grief lie the greatest test of strength. And in the deepest depths of darkness, the greatest thirst for change. Because in silence, injustice thrives. Donna Hood, Kevin's mother, is here with us today. In the search for justice, Kevin's mother led the call for the public to be brave, to stop holding our tongue, to speak up, and to let the words fall out, to bring light to darkness. And so in his memory and in his honor, we have here with us today from the New Jerusalem Worship Center, the Kevin Lamont Miller Jr. Memorial Youth Choir.
On Tuesday, Queensborough President Melinda Katz entered the Queens District Attorney's race, hoping to become the borough's first female district attorney. Queensborough President Melinda Katz cruising to victory for Queens DA. The voters of Queens County should know that I am extremely grateful and honored by the trust and the faith that they have put in me. I am looking forward to continuing to make Queens a better place. I first became an attorney to bring justice to people in a way that many have never gotten. As a legislator, I wrote laws expanding the statute of limitations for child victims of sex abuse and gave women greater access to reproductive health care. And I fought for workers getting them fair wages and better working conditions. As borough president, I tackled tough issues like getting guns off our streets, taking on Trump, and helping end biases in our justice system. Now I'm starting a new job, but it's the same path I've followed all my life. Everyone wants safe streets, but everyone knows our system needs reforms because justice and safety won't come unless we have justice for everyone. We are an unbelievable borough. We are diverse. We are multicultural. We all want a better life for our families than we ever dreamed of having for ourselves. As district attorney, it's my job to protect that dream by protecting everyone's rights while keeping our community safe. But safety doesn't come from a jail cell. It comes from partnering with the community to reduce crime before it happens. We are facing here an opportunity to make a national model for criminal justice reform. And if we don't do it right here, it's gonna have massive effects all throughout this country. But the fact is, we can do it right, and we will. We're committed to standing up to hate crimes and implementing the reforms we promised every day. We'll bring a new era of preventing gun violence and prosecuting gun traffickers to keep guns out of our community. We'll create new bureaus to protect workers and immigrants. We will take on gangs, organized crime, and human traffickers. Crimes against women will get the attention they deserve. And we will implement Queens' first conviction integrity unit to make sure no one who is innocent remains behind bars. These are real reforms, big reforms, overdue reforms, and most importantly, they are achievable reforms. I could never have planned or predicted the path that would lead me to today. But I'm honored to have followed this path and to be in a position to give safety and justice a new face in the County of Queens. I'm Melinda Katz, and I'm so proud to be your next district attorney. Before we administer the oath of office, I understand that uh, I'd like to acknowledge Michael McSweeney, the uh, city clerk, I understand, has joined us today. As well as New York City Council member Farrah Lewis. As a child, my mother would always encourage me. Uh, she would say, Jinjia, which is my Korean name. She said, in your generation, it's going to be a woman's world. My father taught me to never settle for the red tees, but to play and to compete from the white, if not from the blue. Because just like Jean and David Katz, they too wanted an even better world of opportunities and a more level playing field for their daughter than they could have for themselves. And 25 years later, we're still almost there. And she did it with the mandate, 75% to be exact. 75% to be exact. Because a rising tide lifts all ships. And when Melinda Katz rises, she brings others up with her. That's just the kind of person she is. And so without further ado, I'd like to ask the Honorable Janet DeFiore, Chief Judge of the State of New York and the Court of Appeals, to come and administer the oath of office. Excuse me, Judge. It's <laughs> quite all right. <laughs> of course.
I'm Melinda Katz, do solemnly swear. I'm Melinda Katz, do solemnly swear. To uphold the Constitution of the United States. To uphold the Constitution of the United States. To uphold the Constitution of the State of New York. To uphold the Constitution of the State of New York. And to faithfully, with humility, integrity, and compassion. And faithfully, with humility, integrity, and compassion. Discharge my duties. Discharge my duties. As the District Attorney of Queens County. As the District Attorney of Queens County. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Carter and Hunter Katz, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated, thank you. My kids are really nervous, they did a good job, right guys? Guys, you're perfect. Welcome everyone. I want to, uh, excuse me. I want to first thank everyone for coming today to my alma mater, St. John's School of Law. I graduated in this very room where you are sitting right now. Uh, and that's, that's a real ride, let me tell you. Uh, first of all, to our chief judge, Janet DeFiore, an amazing fighter, an amazing judge, and an alumni of St. John's Law School. We'd love that. To Sharon Lee, acting borough president of Queens County. You guys are lucky she doesn't want to be the borough president. <laughs> she's, she is, uh, she's an amazing woman, an amazing elected uh, borough president, uh, an amazing government servant. Uh, she is just everything anyone could hope for, not only in an elected official, but in a friend. Thank you, Sharon, very much. <clears throat> so we have a lot of thanks here today, so you're going to be a little patient with me. It's nice and cool. Everybody's comfortable. I have a plethora of people and a plethora of events that led us to this very moment. Sharon said 75%. We don't like talking about the first one. <laughs> but it was a long summer. There is just no doubt. And with all of you in this room that went through that with me, with all of you in this room who had my back, to all of you who volunteered and knocked on doors and called people and said prayers for me every single night, there is no two people in this borough that felt it harder than my kids. I came home every night, they were there. I needed someone to talk to, they were there. And so I say to my children what I say to them, very often, I would choose you forever and ever, in a hundred lifetimes, in a hundred worlds, in any version of reality, I would find you and I would choose you. I love you both. <laughs> to, uh, I have to just say a prayer for my family uh, tonight. Uh, my father and mother, as you know, were true believers in Queens County. Uh, my father was the founder of the Queens Symphony Orchestra. My mother founded the Queens Council on the Arts. My values were steeped in that family. They taught me what was right. They taught me what was wrong. They taught me what loyalty and trust was about. My father, the last week he was alive, sent someone to the registrar of St. John's Law School, because that was when it was, to make the deposit of $100 to make sure I got into law school. And that, to me, was amazing, because after all his illness and all he was going through, that's what he cared about. So to mom and dad, this is for you tonight. <laughs> to uh, my brother Michael Katz, who lived with HIV his entire adult life, 
31 years, 41 years fighting HIV, 41 years of taking cocktails, 41 years of thinking that our family was going to take care of him in his last few days of life, lived a healthy, wonderful life, thank God, to research and to medicine, spent every day swimming, went to the beach, one day called me, and two hours later in August died of a heart attack. It's amazing when you think about it, but he was there for me every day, so God bless you, Michael, I miss you. <laughs> to my brother Matthew, who is here tonight with his lovely wife, Amy, we thank you, I thank you for all of your friendship, all of your love through the years, and all of your support. To Norman and Michelle Shackle, to Norman Adler and Michelle Shackleford, they are the stand-in grandparents to my children. They are like my parents. They love us no matter what we do. We go to the house for the weekends. Norman, as you know, had an amazing career in politics. But I thank you for the love you've brought to our family, both of you. Thank you. <laughs> to Assemblyman Jeffrey on Aubrey, everyone needs someone in their life. Jeffrey on is mine. He is a friend through thick and thin, through boyfriends, for girlfriends, for everything. We have had an amazing life together, our adult career, our adult life. He has been a leader and an architect in criminal justice reform his entire life in the New York State Assembly, and I could not have been standing here today without you. Thank you, Jeff Aubrey. <laughs> to Greg Meeks and to the Queens County Democratic Party, a group of elected officials and community leaders who dedicate their lives every day to our city and our state and our federal government, that who is the Democratic Party. And I thank Greg Meeks for his leadership. <clears throat> to Jerry Sweeney, Frank Bowles, Mike Reich, with assistance from Stanley Schlein and Harding during that race, it was an amazing, amazing month and a half election day. When you are in uh, an issue where you really need uh, a lawyer, um, people who are friends, you really need to call on Jerry, Frank, and Mike. We thank you for everything. You guys were the A team. Thank you. I want to thank my transition team, Judge Randall Ang and Chris Renfro, who spent a long time interviewing a lot of people with this great transition team that we had. So the transition team, thank you for all the work that you have done to get us right here to this place. Thank you to the pastors, the rabbis, the imams, the pundits. Thank you to all the religious leaders. I appreciate all the friendship and the prayers. And I have a little bit of a, a special thank you to what, what I call, none of you would understand, but that's the Z Squad. We call ourselves the Z Squad. And that is to Quana Henderson, former Assemblywoman Ari Espinal, and Sharon Lee. These are the folks I call at midnight when I need to speak to someone, and they will tell me what's real. They held the Bible the first time I got sworn in. And I want to thank them for their friendship, for getting me here as well. I'm not sure I'd be here if they weren't lifting me up the entire campaign. So thank you. <laughs> to Rory Lansman for loving this borough as much as I do and making sure that the Queens County party was united. Congratulations to Rory Lansman on today because he really was a great part of it. And I'm going to read some names. So Joyce Denny, to Jean Castro, to Clifton Dan Stanley Diaz, to Jacques Leandre, to Michelle Dunstan, Barbara Jackson, Kevin Livingston, Erica Ford, AU, Lance, Todd, and Todd Fortado, to Kay Bain, to Ernest Flowers, to the Queen's Knights attendant leaders, to all of you that were on the front line in this campaign, but most importantly on the front line in helping our young people every single day to make sure that they know someone cares, to make sure that they know that there's justice in the world, and to make sure that the young folks and people who need help have somewhere to go. Thank you to all of them. And I can only tell you this. You have now have a partner in the Queens District Attorney's Office. I want to thank my consultants, Doug, Nathan, Matt, Jess, Aaron from Red Horse Strategies, and thank Taquana, Ramira, Lachey, the entire field uh, team, and my fundraisers, David and Sophie. But I can also say this. I thank my strategists who remembered to do the absentee votes. <laughs> so it's important, you gotta say it. I wanna thank this uh, amazing bench that we have in the borough of Queens County, to all the judges that have joined us here today. 
They, every single day, look for justice in their courtroom. They make it happen. I want to thank you for your leadership to the judges and for being such an unbelievable help to the administration over the last few months. Thank you very much. <laughs> to my amazing team at Queensborough Hall, who really kept the machine running over the last few months, we thank you for the amazing work that you did. To Many of the unions who make this city run and help build this city every single day. To Peter War, the first major union who supported me at HTC. 32 BJ, we miss Hector. We think of him every day, but we know we have a great leader in Kyle Bragg. So thank you, 32 BJ. Michael Mogro of the UFT. I have to tell you guys something. Every time I walked into a room, if you're from the UFT, or Michael or Dermot, if you're out there, every time I walked into a room, someone would say, I just got a phone call telling me to vote for you. I said, you must be a teacher. <laughs> uh, it was amazing uh, work. To Sean Francois, DC 37, local 372, a Queens kid grows up to be a man to take care of our children. We thank you for the work you did. To uh, all of the unions who were so helped, to our men and women in the police department, to Chief of Detectives, Rodney Harrison, Chief Barrere, Chief Frierson, thank you for protecting our city every day and with all the ups and downs, and I have no doubt some of them lay in front of us with new policies, I want to assure you there will always be respect for the work that you do. So welcome to the room I graduated from 30 years ago. It is amazing. And as you saw in the video, every move I've made in my life, every job, every person I've helped, all my training, education, led me right to this spot. From my law school education and knowing that I got here because the last thing my dad did was pay the $100 deposit, to my friendship with Jeff Aubrey, who's a leader in the criminal justice reform world, to growing up every day as a child, knowing how my family was affected by an illegal driver. I'm convinced that I'm here at the right time, at the right place to be the steady hand with this great team that we have got, got, gathered to bring justice to this borough with a steady hand through difficult times. And you know, I truly believe that you make your own destiny. But in case you don't believe me, just a very short story. Frank O'Connor, everybody remember Frank O'Connor? District Attorney of the County of Queens many years ago. He was also the one who protected the wrong man from getting convicted. And interestingly enough, I have props. There was this Black's Law Dictionary sitting on my shelf for the last 30 years. And I opened it up during the campaign. And just because it was sitting there, I wanted to look at it during the campaign. I just, I felt like, you know, it's a special edition. It is gold-plated, it's beautiful. And I opened it up. And I remember the day I got it. Frank O'Connor came to my house in 1990 when I graduated law school. He knew I had no parents. He knew that it was a great day for me. He was a close friend of my father and my mother, and he wanted me to know that someone was there. And he sat at my kitchen table. He gave me this law dictionary. And this law dictionary does not say what you would normally say when you graduate law school. It does not say congratulations on graduating law school. It does not say, you know, uh, I'm so proud of your time at St. John's University. What this Black's Law Dictionary says from 30 years ago, Frank O'Connor gave to me, it says, Melinda, congratulations and welcome to a noble and exciting profession. God be with you all the way. Frank O'Connor, June 3rd, 1990. Then, then my brother and I, Matthew, were talking about the Bible I used for the swearing in, the Old Testament. And Matthew had it, and I didn't trust that he'd be here on time. <laughs> so I said, I want the Bible. And he said, what do you think? We've had it for 50 years. You think I'm going to lose it now? I said, yes, I'm sending someone. And he said, you know, it's really interesting because the inscription in the Bible is by a very famous guy from Queens many years ago. And I said, don't even tell me. And he said, yeah, it's Frank O'Connor. And the inscription said, to David, our father, maestro, teacher, and friend, with great affection, Frank O'Connor. And it is dated January 7th, tomorrow, 1969, 51 years ago. So it gives me goosebumps every time. 
So I tell that story because at various points in his career, he was one of my predecessors as Queens District Attorney, then later a state senator and a judge, and he defended someone who was wrongfully accused. He wanted justice, and justice is why we are all here today. As I said in the video, the path that brought me here is not one I could have planned, but it is clear looking back that this position is the logical outcome of the path that I have followed my entire life. Not because of the many years I practiced being an attorney, but because of my experience as an assembly member, a council member, a borough president, because the active fight for justice, the willingness to take action, to do what's right, has always been the foundation of public service. In the assembly, when I learned that victims of child sexual assault were expected to file charges within five years, that's irrational, and it's a horrible burden to the child. I fought for, and I changed it, and I told the statute of limitations to 18 so that a child who was abused had till the age of 23 to report sexual abuse. In the council, when buildings stopped after 9-11, and many said we needed to underpay workers to get New York moving forward, I stood up and I fought back, protecting workers, and it certainly did not prevent the real estate boom in the city of New York. As borough president, we stood up for immigrants and worked to reduce gun violence and helped the formerly incarcerated get their lives back on track. And now we find ourselves at such a unique moment in history. When it comes to criminal justice, we are both fortunate and challenged to live in this moment. We are challenged because the rule of law and our nation's fundamental belief in equal protection under the law are under attack like never before. But we are fortunate because there's a growing awareness of the injustices and the inequities of our criminal justice system. And we are in a position to stand up, speak out, and make real change. And I say we, even though I'm the one who is charged with the responsibilities of serving as district attorney, I say we because the fight against injustice is all about, all of our fight, and it's all of our responsibility. So I was in shul the other day, and my rabbi, uh, Rabbi Skolnick, who I believe is also here, he quoted Elie Wiesel. And the quote was, let us remember what hurts the victim most is not the cruelty of the oppressor, but the silence of the bystander. We cannot be silent bystanders in the work to make our borough safer, stronger, and more equal. As a Jew, I am outraged by the rise of anti-Semitism that we have seen in recent years. But I am equally as outraged by the violence against our brothers and sisters in the Muslim community and the violence against African-American people in the churches that they pray in. And that goes for the attacks on our LGBT community and our immigrants. We cannot accept those that denigrate immigrants and treat them as lesser members of our community. We all know how that ends. But I am also outraged, but I am equally outraged by that 14-year-old child playing basketball who gets shot and killed on the playground because we can't get guns off of our street. That equally outrages me. We must stand together or they come for all of us. Equally so. We cannot stand silently if we have a criminal justice system in which some people are more likely to be arrested, prosecuted, and incarcerated for longer periods simply because of the color of their skin or the amount of money they have to post bail. That is not justice. That is injustice. And it's up to us, all of us, to stand against it because when we don't stand for our sisters and our brothers and we don't have their backs in the face of injustice, we are laying the groundwork for no one to have our backs when we find our own oppression. Oppression wins by division. Justice wins through unity and equality. So that is the backdrop in which I humbly accept this new position. One in which I will ask and argue that it is incumbent on all of us to be active participants in the fight for justice. I stand on the shoulders of some amazing women. I stand on the shoulders of Geraldine Ferraro, of Elizabeth Holtzman, the first female district attorney, to Shirley Chisholm, 
And now I stand on the shoulders of our first African-American woman, New York State Attorney General, Tish James. I wouldn't be the first female district attorney of Queens or the third ever elected in the city of New York were it not for those women. Darcel Clark, I'm with you. We're good. It's our club, finally, we got it. Let's not let the guys in. So, so it really was coincidence. I got a great team here, just come on. So before I, so Jen Nyberg and Camille, who I've been working with a lot over the last few months, they couldn't stop cracking up when Greg Beeks and the mayor talked about how many times I call a day, right? Because I'm calling them at midnight, I'm calling them at seven in the morning, and funny, they answer. But I am so proud of this team that we have gathered, so thank you all of the executive staff for having faith in me and in this county of Queens. Thank you. <clears throat> So yesterday, I attended the funeral of a friend of a lot of ours, Ann Jawan, one of the Queen's leading women advocates. And at the funeral, someone said, how many times do you see something wrong and think someone should do something about it? But no one ever does. Ann always did. She always did something about it. This has been my approach throughout my career. And I will continue that approach as district attorney. And we do need action, and we need action quickly. The work that we are doing can't wait. And so we have not waited to get started in this administration. And I want to tell you what's already happened at the Queens District Attorney's Office. Before day one, I announced a change in the so-called 18080 waiver policy for a long time. Yay, that's a real change in how this office runs. For a long time, it has been the policy of the Queen's DA's office to demand that defendants waive their right to a timely grand jury if they want to initiate a plea bargain negotiation that is over in Queens County. Further, <laughs> further, this office will refuse to plea any case post, this office who refused to plea any case post indictment at anything but the top count. They will now no longer, that will no longer be the case. We will continue to plea bargain after indictment to make sure justice is actually done. It will not only be the top count. And these are both policies which aided and forced defendants to accept plea bargains. But they did not, in my opinion, further the cause of justice. And as of these we this week, both those policies are gone. Before day one, we created the Queens's first conviction integrity unit. These units are vital not just for restoring justice, but for freeing the innocent. Every wrongful conviction is more than a wrongful act against an individual. It's an injustice to an entire family who will suffer the loss of a spouse, a parent, a provider, a son, a daughter, due, by the way, to someone else's action. And that's really the key word, to someone else's action. That is why my Conviction Integrity Unit is being led by Bryce Benjett, formerly of the Innocence Project. So I thank him for joining us. Before today, the division formerly known as the Special Prosecution Division will be renamed and empowered as the Community Partnership Division. It, is ab it has been ably run in the past by Jesse Sly, and I want to thank him for his continued support and continuing as counsel to this great division. This division is going to be run by Colleen Babb, formerly of the New York City Law Department, Bureau Chief of Family Court, and she, by the way, is from Southeast Queens. Yay! But that is going to be, and Colleen will be, on par with the chief executives of major crime investigations and trials, because it is that important in our administration. As our borough continues to deal with the ongoing effects of gun violence, we as a team are going to strongly, proactively fight back. Because as I said during the campaign, a gun can never be unfired. A life taken can never be restored. So we will get guns off the street with our 24-7 gun buyback initiative and put resources into treating gun violence as the public health crisis that it is and using the proven cure violence, I see you out there, Public health crisis using the pure, pure violence program to stop gun violence and to de-escalate conflicts in areas where gun violence is prevalent. 
And by the way, make no mistake about this. You bring guns, you traffic them, you bring them into my borough, you sell them to our kids, I will prosecute you. So we will work with our communities. We will work to make sure there is partnerships. We will work to make sure that young people never come into the criminal justice system because that's how you really end recidivism. That's how you really make sure you lower crime. Young people never enter the system. They don't have convictions following them the rest of their life. And by the way, they know that the community and the district attorney's office and all the players and stakeholders actually care about their future. That's how you get it done here in Queens County from now on. And it is not perfect, but it is a start. We are also going to process, of, we are also in the process of creating a new and newly empowered immigration unit, which will work across other boroughs to protect immigrants who are victims of crimes, as well as protect the rights of all immigrants who enter our criminal justice system. Whether they are victims, whether they are witnesses, whether they are defendants, and we're going to protect immigrants from ICE's overreach, especially in our courthouse. The Attorney General has been an amazing leader on this. You can't get justice for anyone if our witnesses and their victims and their families are afraid to come forward and go into a courthouse because of their status. And in that light, we are also taking on hate crimes. And we will be diverting more resources into prevention, prosecution, and community education. Hate crimes don't exist in a bubble. They grow out of unchecked words and actions of others who directly inspire or legitimize them. Our most effective tool against hate, as always, will be building bridges and lines of communications across communities. But when someone breaks the law, they will be prosecuted and they will be held accountable for their actions. <laughs> to achieve all of this, we will be building an office that is as diverse as this wonderful great borough in which we live. You all know my saying. 190 countries, 200 languages, the most diverse area on the planet. Every community, every faith, every neighborhood needs to know that this office is here to help keep them safe and to protect their rights. And having an office that looks more like our borough is a vital first step. In reshaping this office, I've already appointed a number of individuals to high-level positions to help enact these policies, but this is only the beginning. And finally, I would like to talk about bail reform. This, <laughs> this is an issue which has gained a lot of press attention of late. And these are issues we need to address. But let me start by saying this. My office is committing to ending cash bail in all forms, period. But it must be done right and cannot be achieved totally until we have a system in place for ensuring that defendants indeed come back to court. We cannot keep using a system that is discriminatory and incarcerates people who have not been convicted of any crimes, which has devastating effects on far too many families in our borough. Our old system was based on letting people out of jail if they have money and keeping them in jail if they didn't. That's a preposterous standard. It is something that was not achievable on day one of my administration without the infrastructure on supervised release and all that we need in order to support that in place. It's an ongoing process, but we need to make sure that the way we do it, the way we actually get rid of cash bail is sustainable. Our system will need to go through changes, we'll need to go through partnerships to achieve true equity, but while figuring it out, when we will figure it out, we will keep our communities safe, which, by the way, is the reason I was elected to be the Queens County District Attorney. And by the way, I'm only on day six, in case anybody's wondering. So once we have more time to assess the inner workings of the office and the critical needs we have to fill, we will once again take a major look at the structure the organization and policy changes that are still needed within the office. So in 100 days from now, we reassess, we look over, and we reassess again. We will have more reforms to announce, more changes to come, and more policies to implement. We will also face challenges as we do this, but I know we can meet and surpass those challenges. 
because the path that has led me here, from childhood tragedy to law school to a career in public service, has been one of constant challenges, personal and professional. And through it all, the work that we do, the justice we fight for, the love of my family, and the support of people of this great borough has been my rock and my institution. Now, I know this will surprise you, but there's a lot of naysayers and critics. Does that surprise anyone here? And there are those that do both, right? They say, we're not going far enough. We're, not, we're going too far. But I was elected, I'd like to think, because of the trust that I will bring a steady hand in these times of uncertainty. Steady, a steady hand, a common sense hand, a safe hand, lowering recidivism, making sure that our young people know there's an infrastructure. That's why I was elected, and I look forward to that challenge with the trust to do the right thing, even though we know we cannot achieve it all in that one single day. But as I always tell my kids, it is always better and braver to work toward progress, to do something rather than standing on the sidelines and criticizing. Bravery is giving people a second chance. Bravery is laying aside differences to work together. Bravery is making sure that second chance actually works. Bravery is working every single day, fixing a broken system piece by piece and never giving up when it gets hard. Bravery is facing the criticisms of those who complain and do not do, and never letting it take you off your game. Bravery is respecting everyone in the process, even amongst all of our massive disagreements that we have, even if you are respecting those that you vehemently disagree with to get to a better day. So my friends, I ask you to be brave with me, because I know that we as a borough will not be bystanders in this fight for justice. We are together, we are united, and we are committed to making Queens the safest, strongest, and most just borough possible. Thank you, everybody. You can be amazing. You can